I think most listeners to this radio station know that I have very little respect for the modern day school teacher. There's lots of reasons for that. But it's interesting to see an article here from a fellow called Tony Sayers. Now, Tony Sayers is a retired school teacher. He trained at Ardmore Teachers College and has held the position of school principal in Australia and New Zealand. His teaching experience spans new entrance level to sixth form in primary and secondary subjects, including graphic designs and some of the sciences. Now, it's interesting that Tony Sayers would have gone through Ardmore Training College under a principal out there called R.J. Evans. And R.J. Evans was, I knew R.J. Evans, he was a teacher of mine down in Nelson, he was a master of mine down in Nelson, and he was a wonderful teacher. And I had reason to meet up with R.J. some years later when I was involved with a company who was supplying particular information to the Ardmore Training College and lo and behold I walked into the boss's office and it was RJ Evans sitting behind the desk and I've spoken to many many teachers who learnt their trade under RJ Evans and they were far far different to the POWs we have today in front of the classes. POWs prisoners of woke. Now what Tony Sayers says here is that there is a couple of teachers speaking out and about confronting separatism and one of those is a fellow called John Bell now Tony Sayers mentions John Bell in particular and this is what he says John deserves commentation for his courage to speak up and push back A few years ago, in my article entitled The Tail Wagging the Dog, published on media, I called upon retired teachers whose careers could no longer be threatened if they spoke up to draw the attention of the public to the Maori take over the education system. Since that time, only John Bell and three other teachers have gone public about the state of affairs. Unfortunately, the shift in the axis of education in New Zealand has brought about more Maori activists in universities and schools has been assisted by the woke white ants, the POWs in the Teachers' Unions, the Teachers' Council of New Zealand and the Ministry of Education. This is evident when reading their literature and there's piles of it out there. With reference to John Bell's commentary about the increasing practice of replacing English words with Maori words in government and council literature, plus signage in government buildings, this is just another straw on the pile of offensive and aggressive Maori separative actions that consist of vandalising and pressurising the removal of statues with British significance, cutting down exotic trees and parks that have a connection with Britain, twisting history, twisting the Treaty of Waitangi, subverting education system, sabotaging the Captain Cook commemoration, replacing the English names of towns and geographic features with Maori names, influencing the firing of radio talkback hosts, claiming of fresh water resources and coastlines, claiming that electromagnetic radio spectrum, <laughs> which was just crazy, <laughs> that in itself, that, that we, that we allowed that to happen. Publicly denouncing anything that does not fit the Maori agenda is being racist, setting up illegal roadblocks that obstruct the public. The list goes on and on and on. These events are all on record and not a figment of any of our imagination. All have happened. Yes, all have happened in the past three to four years. All of those actions under the stewardship of both the National and the Labour Government Coalition screams of the intent 
to elevate the Māori 15% of population to a status of equal partner to Queen Victoria, the legitimate monarch to whom their ancestors in 1840 pledged allegiance as subjects in order to gain protection from their Stone Age, their cannibal, their tribal enemy neighbours. This ceding of sovereignty was acknowledged by Māori at the Koe Maramara Conference in 1860. Today, the elite minority of the Māori 15% of this country population, they seek 50% or even more of power over the majority, 85% of the population. All of these manifestations are glaring Kiwi in the face and many of the frogs in the pot are now aware of the dangers that demography faces in New Zealand. But being more abiding citizens, they are unsure of what to do. The majority of us just want to live our lives peacefully and have never contemplated being placed in the situation that we now face. John Bell has manifested his opposition to attempts of the Maori separatist movement to relegate the English language and culture to a status below that of Maori by promoting his own culture and traditional language roots as a form of protest. Whilst the small gesture from one brave individual, this has great merit. At this time, we have to push back. You have to push back. I have to push back. I can't do any more on this radio station than I already am. I've been pushing back for bloody years. You know that. But because of the gutless teachers, the POW, yes, the gutless bloody teachers that we have standing in front of our classroom, they are allowing this to happen. And they haven't got the guts. They haven't got the foresight. They haven't even got the vision to say, hey, enough is enough. So they go along like the little POWs they are, the prisoners of woke, and they take all this crap and they accept it and then they teach it. Shame on them, shame on them, shame on them. You've got to remember that all race-based legislation policy, it's certainly been messaged to uh, convey to the present government that the majority are not happy. No, the majority are not happy about the stance of that key government. And certainly with this woolly, silly little girl who runs this particular government where, they're, where they are actually helping to go for this separatism. At this point, I wish to make clear that my stance is not anti-Maori, it's anti-Maori sovereignty separatist. Of course it is. Those Maori who are pushing and pushing and pushing to ruin this country and the people and the uh, people who are really in a position to stop this are those bloody, weak-willed, gutless, spineless teachers. But of course, but of course, they probably won't do it because, as we said before, they're gutless and spineless. Most of us who have long-standing friendships with moderate Maori people resist becoming politically polarised, but for me it was the last straw when Jacinda Ardern and the police legitimise the illegal roadblocks imposed upon the public by Maori groups by, led by the likes of that bloody idiot Hani Harawira. Those Maori wrongly anticipated that the pandemic would bring about the demise of the infrastructure and law and order presenting the opportunity for this rabble to exceed their authority. And remember, Maori separatists have prevented speaking events that did not conform to their mantra by threatening violence, the sabotage of a legitimate address by Don Brash at Massey University was certainly an example. The point being that if Maori can threaten violence, is this a form of hate speech or racial incitement? And why have the police have failed to prosecute? So what is the law exactly? Other proposed hate speech laws only to be applied to non Maori. Is this just another example of racially biased government being propped up by a compromised police force? Well, it's certainly being propped up by the POW school teachers, isn't it? 
school teachers who allow this to happen to them, allow this nonsense in their classroom, in their classroom, not the Maori classroom, their classroom, and they haven't even got the guts to teach both sides of the argument or debate of man-made global warming. We are in the shit in this country. We are. We really are. And if you haven't woken up to that yet, well, God help you. God help your children. God help your grandchildren. And in fact, God help New Zealand.